thank you for joining us now in our discussion. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254 Discussion Monday. We are looking at the political scope, what has happened in the last very few days. Just over the weekend, the deputy president took the country by surprise by acknowledging the handshake, something that many people, if not all, will agree it's something he has not done since March 9th, 2018. Write it on. Yes, uh, I think uh, the handshake is, a, is a, we, we can't lie that the handshake was a, a blanket, something everybody can see. True. So I really think that the deputy president, either he, he must have acknowledged the handshake behind the scenes or simply chose to keep quiet about it until the right time, which I think was this weekend. But you see, the critics are like, um, you have had all this time, all the platforms you've had. But now you had to see it there and then. Why? Politically speaking. Well, uh, the politics of this nation uh, is one that um, uh, requires a lot of persona, a lot of space, and a lot of uh, 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 well choreographed platforms. So I really think that the DP, being that he was in Kisumu, uh, called to be precise, mm -hmm. he needed something that uh, could take uh, the day to where it was. I really think that that any other place he wouldn't have said it. All right. I can bet on that. Kevin, yes. what's your take? He says it's because he was in Kisumu and he had to appreciate and acknowledge the handshake. What's your take? Mm, not really. You know, politics about interest. <laughs> and uh, the politics that the DP and the likes have been playing, they've been doing it to counter check the BBI. So maybe they were wary about the outcomes of the BBI. And we see you know, Kurua court also coming up with this uh, something sort of a referendum mm -hmm. that was uh, also the intended intention of VBI right. that we were actually to go for a referendum. Okay. So you see uh, Kurua court's uh, referendum push has rattled many, and you can see now leaders, uh, leaders now uniting against uh, Okot's uh, referendum. All right. So I think the change of tune is actually to 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 find out whether uh, the BBI has some sort of uh, actually they will have uh, uh, proposals that will be admirable to Kenyans. So what Okot is coming up with is uh, to counter what the BBI uh, is likely to give us. So the DPP in this case, or the the deputy president in this case, he has seen what the Okot's bill has. Uh, as a, uh, the Kenyans or the MCAs are a bit uh, not jittery with the Okot's uh, proposals. True. So I think it's a change of tact. Mm -hmm. It's a political strategy. The deputy president is a witty politician, reading the moods. Uh, the referendum is something that is coming. Mm. All right. So it's better to start changing tune. So it's kind of both of you agree that it was a political statement made to try to get to something. But now, uh, this will move. Yes. Already it's like three days since. Sure. Do you think Deputy President, wherever he is right now, he's regretting or he's like clapping? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we must all admit that the Deputy President today, in today's Kenya, he appears to sit at the apex of the political game. However much many might not acknowledge. We have to admit that is one of the wittiest politicians we are having in this nation today. But you have a majority who have been saying Amisha. Ah, uh, well, the majority is always wrong. Don't forget that, mm -hmm. too. So I, I really think that um, wherever the deputy president is right now, if in any case he's focusing on what happened over the weekend, which I really think he is not, in case he is, mm -hmm. Uh, then I think he thinks he made a, made a political move. So yeah, he's clapping. And in any way, do you think whatever he said has an impact on his colleagues and other politicians, either existing or upcoming? I think that it has a huge influence on the upcoming. Mm -hmm. And of course, a small influence on the existing. The existing uh, today has it that. However, much, we have two, two serious groups today. We have the President Kenyatta Raila group, and we have the deputy president group. Right. All the others, all the others fall within the two. Mm -hmm. However much anybody can be shouting to be apokatikati, the truth is they all fall on one side or on both. So what I, I, I think is this. Uh, the deputy president's uh, talk over the weekend was not just a, a hearsay. That was a well choreographed and well 
uh, pre-planned speech. So he knows that with that, he turns down uh, the opposition's uh, uh, hate towards him. And as such, one or two people might easily think that probably he wants to work with uh, uh, Prime Minister Ray Lodinka soon. Mm. So th th the influence is there All right. Uh, right now. But again in future, admit that uh, we have less than three years left before the next government is formed. Mm. And uh, however much I also have huge respect to, for uh, the Punguza Mzigo bill, it might, about 80%, it might not see the light of the day. All we right. all know that. So, uh, like my colleague here said, uh, the speeches going forward between now up to the near future, say uh, 18 months, mm -hmm. are not just going to be hearsay on the streets. However much they might be spoken on the street, there will be well choreographed talks that were well arranged and have got huge impacts right now and going forward. All right. Uh, Kevin, Don has said maybe Deputy President uh, William is looking to working with the Prime Minister, that is uh, a former Prime Minister, Ray Lodinga. But now, uh, there's a time when he was in the Rift Valley, Rayla said uh, Deputy President William Ruto needs him if he wants to be the president. Now that they were in Kisumu, is it a way of trying to say, I'm acknowledging what you have done and it's true, I need you? Does he? Not necessarily acknowledging, but you know, depending with the environment that you are in, mm -hmm. politicians are uh, made in such a way that you tell the people what they want to hear. So that was a good uh, we would message to tell the congregation. Mm -hmm. Actually, even got applauses from the uh, mourners of the congregation mm -hmm. because that was uh, really what they needed to hear. True. But I'm thinking that uh, the deputy president has caught a lot of people with surprise because uh, quite a number of uh, the perception that has been uh, in the public limelight is that the deputy president has not been for the BBI or uh, the handshake. Mm -hmm. But you'll find that uh, his uh, troops are the ones who have been very loud about the handshake or the BBI. All right. And the deputy president has never been clear whether he supports or he doesn't support. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing he has been clear about is that he doesn't need, uh, he doesn't need uh, an expanded executive. All right. That is something he has been very clear about. Okay. So I also think that if a proposal to expand the executive is in the BBI or the report that we are getting to get from the BBI. Mm -hmm. I don't see him going to change a lot or deviate from what his position has been. Okay. So to support or to say that we are working together to ensure that unity, we have unity, is a, is a fully banded president. All right. To mean that uh, he supports whatever will come out of the BBI. So far, we don't know what the report is going to be all about. We've not okay. known. We'll be touching on that as we like to just, just one minute. I think this, the, the, the discussion on Moshe uh, uh, Memoraila's uh, take on the, the other time when he was at the Rift Valley, that statement does not need to be overstated. And I really believe that anyone who uh, underestimated the impact of that speech mm -hmm. uh, will be forgiven. Because trust me, one thing the deputy president acknowledges better than anyone is that he's unlikely to succeed or to sit at the apex of the national leadership without Ray Lodinga. So I really still doesn't know exactly if that is what he was doing in Kisumu the other time, but him and his camp acknowledges the same. All right. So I really think that over the weekend was a, a full-time political game. All right. But actually, since the inception of the handshake, he has been against it and uh, there came about three factions of people there was the embrace team there was uh Kieleweke and tangatanga and just yesterday in muranga county in his speech he was kind of calling it off when he said let's now work and now it is alluded to mean the tangatanga and Kieleweke team have been disband disbanded so what are we looking at will these people continue uh campaigning because they have been doing that don't be mistaken these are politicians they remain politicians however much they are leaders too mm -hmm. um, politicians are dealers much more than leaders and as such at every given opportunity they get they always want to tell you what you want to listen to but uh, i would uh, sincerely appreciate if uh, the deputy president dr william ruto meant that uh, the kieleweke versus uh, tangatanga war 
uh, this, the, the Cold War comes to an end. Because uh, the Wanjikus, the Utienos, the Nyangos, the Kimanis down there have really not benefited from the war, whether it's through the BBI, through the Kieleweke, through the Punguza Mzigo. Mm -hmm. There have always been talks, naysays, and uh, who ends up on the losing end? The people on the ground. Right. Yeah. So I, I really uh, think that um, while I, I, I don't want to overstate what he said yesterday, I really still think that uh, we don't need to start celebrating. Mm. The Cold War still looks to extend further. Oh, so it, 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 it will continue. Yeah. Now, uh, let's touch on final thing about the BBI. Uh, Kevin, you've been touching on this in your uh, sentiments, and uh, the report is ready. Yes. And uh, the chairperson, Haji, says now they will look into it. And one of the things the uh, people have been proposing is seven year term for the president, and then we'll be having eight prime ministers. This will represent the eight provinces that we have. How good is this deal? Yes, in as far as uh, the seven-year term is concerned, mm -hmm. because we've been having elections after every five years, and we've only seen that there is only election violence where the president is, uh, is going for a second term. In the year 2002 and 2003, there was no violence because nobody was uh, defending a seat. So that is not to say that there are no other factors that get us uh, to violence. There are so many other factors, like electoral injustices. But if you look at all the violences, the conflicts around elections, more so the presidency, you'll find that these conflicts are uh, when somebody's defending a seat. Mm -hmm. So having a seven-year term would mean that nobody's defending. So nobody will be fighting for a re-election or something of that sort. So having a fixed term, a one term of seven years, I think it will somehow sort issues of conflict in surrounding presidential election. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that we don't deal with the electoral injustices that has been happening surrounding those elections. Mm -hmm. Then talking about uh, the eight uh, prime ministers, prime min uh, you call them prime ministers. Yeah. Now I've not seen the reports, so I don't know how they are calling it. Mm -hmm. Talking about the eight represent the former or the former regional, the former regionals or the regions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that is a question of unity or inclusivity. Uh, trying to address who is not in a government and who is in government. Mm -hmm. So in short, you are in government when your political kingpin is in, in, in government, has been appointed in government or not. Mm -hmm. Because even the current government, mm -hmm. they say that everybody has been represented. Right. But it's, we don't, as a citizens or as a common man, you will not see that you are represented when your political kingpin is not in that government. Mm -hmm. So to address that perception that you are only in government when your political kingpin is in government, mm -hmm. I think that's why they are coming up with such a, uh, a solution. Mm -hmm. But my thinking is, if we can deal with the electoral injustices, whereby elections are uh, run in a free and fair manner, so that number, whoever is declared a winner, Mm -hmm. accepts that he has won and whoever has lost accepts that he has lost, mm -hmm. then I don't see the essence of bringing in the positions that we are talking about because that would mean that we are increasing our wage bill, sure. which we've been talking about as uh, injuring our economy or affecting our economy. Don, a seven-year term president in this era of corruption, you know if you get there, you have nothing to gain or lose. What we will have of you is a name. Sure. Don't you think we will have solved the historical injustices in our, the tribes of Kenya, but also we will have damaged our moral virtues in terms of corruption? Because I, if five years a person steals, how about if you give them seven years and they know they will not be coming back? You know, I, I, I tend to think that um, we are giving too much relevance to the presidency, which is a, a single office in a nation of over 50 million people. <laughs> And even if we were to go through the eight prime ministers, we are still uh, going the exact road we are in. We're just changing the, 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 the clothes. We're just the same people. I tend to believe that uh, uh, a change in our constitution through the referendum uh, might solve maybe half our problem, but it won't solve the problems completely. While I really, really uh, embrace the upcoming change, I, how I wish that we could uh, look at it more critically, because uh, having a seven-year uh, 
presidency term, for example, does not solve the, corrupt, the corruption issues that are bedeviling this nation, does not, corrupt, does not uh, uh, correct the, 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 the poor revenue collection across counties, for example, does not really correct the main uh, issues such as huge prices in uh, skyrocketing prices in food, we, the, 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 the poor relations we are having among uh, tribes, so uh, the, the, the intended changes that we are soon having, they are very good for this nation, but actually they will not solve most of our problems. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I think that uh, a seven-year, one-term president, I, I really still have not gone through the report. So I really don't want to come up with a clear one-to-one -one, uh, decision that's good or bad, but I think that for now, mm -hmm. If that's what is good for Kenya, I am for it. All right. Now, the head of task force, Haji, said it will be presented to the president that is next month. So we wait and see if it will be implemented. Now, I want us to conclude by your comments or recommendations as a nation in terms of politics. Where are we and where are we heading? Now that we have seen what the pres deputy president did over the weekend, he acknowledged and also called for the groups or the troops that have been campaigning out here. What do we expect tomorrow? My last uh, comment, first I would wish to take the opportunity to sincerely appreciate uh, the Deputy President efforts in uh, uh, acknowledging the BBI and uh, say killing off the cold war that exists between Kieleweke and uh, the Tanga Tanga. I just wish to uh, plead with uh, him and uh, all the other leaders that our responsibility as leaders is to bring the nation to one. We bring the nation as one to God, to all of us, so that every Kenyan feels a sense of belonging. Uh, we don't want a situation in which a kid in school tells you that, um, for example, that uh, when you are Tanga Tanga or when you are Kieleweke, and this are kids are still growing up. So already they are ingrained with the view that uh, we're having a, a, a nation that is divided, okay? Mm -hmm. So I just want, uh, just pray that we just have a nation that is uh, fully uh, one thing. Mm -hmm. And if we can get that, let's all move towards that direction. If we can get it through the BBI uh, combined with Kileweke and Tanga Tanga into one thing, plus Okuro Okot's Punguza uh, Mzigo. We can all sit as a nation and come up with one thing that is going to lead us to peace. That, I think, is where we should head. Okay, before I move to Kevin, do you think this bill will go through because most of the leaders that we know, popular leaders, have refused it? The Punguza Mzigo? Yes. I just said in the beginning that it will not. It will not. Yeah. But unless... He's taking it to the county level. Unless... Unless... Okay. We have the truth and the lies. Mm -hmm. The truth is, it will, not. it will not. I really appreciate and I just I hope uh, Moshima Okot is watching this. And if he's not, someone else is watching it and will pass it over to him. Mm -hmm. The only way that this is going to happen, which we might not want as the, the best, but it's the best way uh, possible right now, mm -hmm. he should swallow unnecessary pride that is gathering. He should go down to the president, sit him down with the president, the deputy president, uh, the, the, the prime minister, what you are Chini, and then they come up with something that is one. Right. right now, uh, Moshima Court walking around the counties is a very good thing in this constitution, right? But it's not adding value mm. to the common man because if he does all that, and then in the end the document is taken and thrown under the desk, right. how is it helping us? So, so uh, Kevin, your final thoughts? Yes, my final thoughts. Actually, the message that we got from Laboso's burial. I think the leaders should uh, take the message and practice it so that we can move on as a country. Let us uh, tone down on the political uh, temperatures. Let us get down to work. Uh, on, uh, then I want to say also let us not ethnicize the war on corruption. Let us uh, support the DCI, let us support the DPP, then let's uh, get down to ensure that our resources are well used. Mm. On uh, a court's bill, uh, the message is very good, but the messenger is not accepted. So you know our assembly is at uh, <laughs> very beautiful recommendations, how to fight graph, they are very beautiful. But uh, the assemblies, the majority of uh, 
uh, members of the county assemblies, they are from our political parties, mm -hmm. and of course parties not represented in those assemblies. Okay. Parties have taken position, and I don't see the bills getting the day of the light. But uh, I'm sure most of the Kenyans are asking, why should we trust the messenger and not trust the messenger? <laughs> <laughs> That's I think yes, because he's not, he's, not, he's, not following the right, he's not following the right road. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 all right, yeah. gentlemen, many thanks for coming and sharing yes. your comments. They have been my guest, uh, Kevin Adipo, political scientist and the political analyst, Don Anaklet. Coming up next is Why Masha Wiki. I will see you on Monday again. Till then, have yourself a very good week and good night. My name is Dereva Hilary. Have yourself a good night. Bye. Thank you. Imagine.